What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Torino Career Mode, this is episode number 79 and we start today's episode off by Monaco coming back to us regarding Immobile and saying they weren't going to match our counter offer and then following that Immobile said he thinks he's going to be the perfect replacement for Sergio Aguero's vacant spot and I thought that was kind of funny because he's been playing with Aguero, you know, since Aguero came in, he's never been dropped to the bench or anything so I thought that was kind of funny but uh, either way Immobile basically just saying, you know, maybe we don't need to sign a new striker, maybe just have me as the number one striker, partner Poloski with me and you know I'll be the main man to lead us to success this season so we'll have to wait to see what happens but of course we are putting in loads and loads of bids for a few players if you missed the last episode we sold Aguero to Bayern Munich for oh wow I've already forgotten 85 million 85 million 86 million 85 million I think it was Aguero is now gone to the Allianz Arena and uh, we're looking for replacements but uh, still we do start today's episode off with the Coppa Italia here against Genoa last season we won the Serie A and of course we also won the Coppa Italia as well uh, sorry this is the Super Coppa not the Coppa Italia in the Super Cup here. We won the Coppa Italia last season. We won the Serie A last season. And uh, in the Coppa Italia, we beat Genoa by four goals to nil in the final. So they take us on here in the Super Coppa. We won it last year. We beat Juventus by two goals to one. So coming to this one, hope of making it two trophies out of a possible two. A couple of good chances in the first half. Another good one here is Gabby Dini finds a Mobley. He goes forward to shoot. But Perrine makes a really good save and turns behind for a corner. So still goalless going into the break. Six minutes after the restart, we had a corner. Genoa fails to deal with it and it comes, uh, comes to Danilo. Our right back finds Alexandro, who had a man the match performance in the Champions League final, but that shot goes over the bar and behind for a goal kick. So still Torino nil, Genoa nil, despite there being a lot of chances for us. We couldn't break the deadlock and in the 55th minute. Another good chance here is a Mobile feeds it through towards Lorenzo Motta. He turns, plays it through towards Hakan. Hakan fakes shots around his man and goes to shoot. It's blocked, but Gabby Dini rolls it through towards Poloski and the shot hits the post and Genoa get the ball away. So we had so many chances to open the scoring, but just couldn't find the back of the net. And in the 61st minute, Fet Fatsidis plays a great through ball towards Lesti and he goes to shoot. It's cleared off the line by Danilo, but the flag was up for offside anyway and it wouldn't have counted. But I still thought that was a great uh, defensive interception by Danilo. And it was still Torino nil, Genoa nil. They again went very close here in the 66th minute. Fet Fatsidis' header goes just wide to post and behind for a goal kick. So still goalless as things stood, despite there being a lot of chances. But from the goal kick, we pass out from the back as per usual. Alexandra gets on the ball and pokes it through towards Manolo Gabbiadini. Gets past the number two here, goes down the left hand side. Gets tackled, but it falls to Alexandro. Sandro plays it inside towards Grenier. Let's the ball run through his legs. It comes to Motta. Motta has a man out wide in Hakan Shalanolu. Gets inside with the ball roll. Shoots and finds the back of the net as well. And the number seven makes it Torino 1, Genoa 0. So Hakan, who came in for £15 million pounds at the start of the second season, he's always been one of the best players in the team. Last season, he had a bit of a sub pass second half to the season, but this is a great way to start the new one. Scoring your first goal in the first game in the Super Cup and making it Torino 1 as Genoa 0. So one goal up in this game, we finally take the lead. And in the 90th minute in stoppage time, we were putting the pressure on. Poloski slide tackles to win the ball back. It falls to Shiro Immobile, who goes through 1-1, one -one, takes around the last defender after he caught up and finesses the ball past Perrine and into the back of the net to make it Torino 2 as Genoa 0. So Immobile wants to be the main man this year. He doesn't believe we have to sign a new striker. He believes that he will always score goals, which he always will, and believes that that should be enough for him to be the number one man at this Torino club and be the man to fire us to back-to-back -back Champions League trophies, back-to-back -back Serie A's, back-to-back Supercoppers, back-to-back Coppa Italias. But either way, we're not too sure. He did score this goal to make it 2-0, and that was how the game would finish. So final score, Torino 2, Genoa 0. Back-to-back Supercoppers, delighted with that. And it was a game which I think we thoroughly deserve to win as well. Obviously, the Supercoppa, not a big trophy, not something we're desperate to win. But either way, always nice to start the season off with some silverware. We do it here. Final score, Torino 2, Genoa 0. And great to get the win which I think we thoroughly did deserve as you can see by the match stats here and um, my player of the match as you can see went to Lorenzo Motta I thought he played quite well and got an assist for the Shalanolu goal and uh, that's why he was my player of the game and uh, as well following that as you can see a transfer offer came in for Keita here. Our young winger is decreasing in stats. He's now down to a 75 overall. What a shame. He's never going to bounce back from that injury. And he looks like he might be on his way to Spain to join Sevilla as we ask for £4 million and we'll wait and see what they say. And also loads and loads of rejects from Chelsea, Athletic Madrid, Hoffenheim, Barcelona and Dortmund for loads of their players. But one transfer offer did get accepted from the batch we put in in the last episode. And that was for, you better believe it, Raheem Sterling of all the players that might 
might be coming to Torino. Raheem Sterling for £18 million. Clearly City got overpriced or overcharged, I should say. £18 million for Sterling. I mean, that just... That, that's a great deal. I mean, seriously, whether you like him or loathe him, Sterling for £18 million, 84 rated, 22 years old, listed attacker midfielder, can play striker, and also on the wings as well. Sterling coming in for £18 million, he may not be the main man to replace Sergio Aguero. You know, he may not bang in the goals like he did, but for £18 million is a bid on its own. Forget the Aguero deal. £18 million is a bargain, in my opinion, for Sterling, so I'll definitely take that. But uh, Sevilla came back to us regarding Cater and said £3.4 million take it or leave it and I said I'll definitely take that as he's decreasing in stats and you can have him as he looks a little bit crocked and uh, following that some bids got rejected again for Sturridge, Bale, uh, Muller and Dos Santos and I'm not sure whether we'll match any of those bids we'll have to wait and see though also Gabby Dini has been put on a transfer list as he haven't been, hasn't been offered a contract and that's totally fine with me and also I put in a bid for Marco Verratti because I am contemplating changing the uh, formation with Torino in our fourth and final season and I would love to get this guy as a central midfielder he's got some unreal passes stats 87 rated at just 24 years old and of course Italian as well is always a nice bonus but I think PSG are going to hold us to ransom with him and also Rui Barros wants to terminate his contract which is fine because he's a goalkeeper in our academy that doesn't look very good and we are looking like we will uh, make the first signing of the new window here well, uh, first signing uh, of these uh, batch of players anyway, because we already signed Brooks and Lucas on pre-contracts, as uh, Sterling has accepted his contract and he's most likely going to be joining us here at Torino. We did put in a new bid for Paolo Dybala because I would love to get this guy back to, you know, come back to the Stadio Olimpico de Torino, come back to the club that was propelling his career. But I'm not too sure we're really going to be able to get him for anything less than, I'd say, 60 million, which I think to me is a little bit too expensive. I mean, that's why we sold him, really, because the offer was too good to turn down. They're basically trying to recoup what they paid for him so I don't really want to match that but uh, still as you can see Sterling did indeed accept his contract so Sterling is going to come and join us here at Torino whether you like him or hate him that deal speaks for itself 18 million pounds is nothing to pay for a player of his class that is going to get better and better and better in the game 84 overall only 22 years old don't forget so this guy's got the potential to be very very good in the future and yes of course I know it's the final season so it's not too relevant but either way it's still nice to do that uh, just because you, you like the idea of continuing the series even if you won't if you know what I mean trying to play for uh, just play for the future even if it is your final season because it just sort of sticks to the trend you've always been doing uh, still a Mobley was wanted by Southampton and uh, we basically asked for a lot of money they're not going to match and also Cater has joined Sevilla for 3.4 million pounds a bit of a shame we'll get just uh, just under half of what we paid for him which was 6 million pounds it's a shame he never worked out but that's just one of those things and there you go also PSG rejected a bid for Marco Verratti not a real surprise I don't think we'll be able to get hold of him because I think PSG are going to ask for way too much money which we're not really prepared to pay but we'll have to wait and see because the CM area is not a priority we've got some great central midfielders in that club right now it's not a priority but either way I'd still like to get him we'll have to wait and see also Barcelona came back to us regarding Dybala again and once again said 66 million pounds or nothing so I think those negotiations are going to end there it would have been really nice to get Dybala back for the final season but yeah I'm not prepared to pay that and, uh, and there you go and also Lorenzo Arialdo we looked at him last season um, from Sass We've been a straight swap bid with De Vry and we're waiting to see what Sassuolo say. Maybe they'll like to take De Vry off our hands uh, plus a little bit of money. So I'll be totally fine paying that to get hold of him. Another Italian player, always good and free ratings higher is a nice step up. Also Neymar as well, putting a bit of £35 million. And we'll wait and see what Luis Enrique says. Wouldn't mind get hold of the Brazilian and uh, we'll have to wait and see. And also a transfer we came in for Poloski as well. The punisher is wanted by Swansea for £6 million. Wouldn't be against selling Poloski to raise some funds for a better striker. But either way, he's coming since the the first season. He's always scored goals. It'll be a bit of a shame to sell him in the final one, wouldn't it? So we'll have to wait and see what Gary Monk says there. And there you go. And also PSG wants £61 million for Verratti, which I don't really want to pay. So... I don't think we'll be able to get hold of the central midfielder, but you never know. We might, we might be able to bargain with them, get them down a little bit, but there you go. But how about this for a transfer, Robert? Lorenzo Arialdo from Sassuolo looks like he's on his way to the club for a straight swap deal with Stefan de Vrij. No money being exchanged whatsoever, just one player for another. Sassuolo came to me and said, yeah, that deal was totally fine, which was a real shock. I did not see that coming. I thought they'd ask for like, I don't know, maybe like 10 million pounds plus de Vrij because he's free ratings lower. But no, they said, just just take him. You can have Arialdo and, uh, you know, we'll 
will take the rice. That's a real surprise. He looks, he looks like he's on his way to Sassuolo, and Ariado is coming to the Stadio Olimpico de Torino. So I totally take that deal. That's a really good deal, in my opinion. And also Neymar as well, putting a bit of £38 million. And we'll wait and see what they say. Because I would, I would love to get Neymar. Again, another player who can play on the wings and through the middle and as a striker. Uh, I think he could play in all those positions. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. And there you go. And also, Camisa has gone to Sassena for a season long loan. Totally fine with me. And also, Lorenzo Arialdo does become our second uh, full signing of this summer transfer window. And I'm really looking forward to seeing him uh, link up at the centre of the, uh, the defensive positions and seeing how he does. But that does end the episode, guys. So, as always, a big thank you for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed today's episode of Torino Career Mode, then please do leave a like. It's much appreciated. It really does help my channel out. And I'll see you for the next episode of Torino Career Mode very soon.